Hello everyone, I'm Wesco Mgwapasco, Head Teacher Wisdom Center. Yes, your son's teacher. Okay, uh, I'm back again that we, we, we move ahead with our daily activities as usual. So this time uh, we are moving ahead, yes, looking at the goat breeds. Remember last time we looked at different breeds of animals, of animals. we talked of uh, uh, breeds of cattle, breeds of rabbits, okay, uh, breeds of chickens. So for this time, we want to move ahead looking at the breeds of gods. Okay, yes. And then, uh, this, can, yeah, simply. When we talk about breeds of gods, okay, simply look at uh, gods actually kept for rare or rarely for both meat and meat production. So breeds of gods are animals or are gods reared on a farm, simply. Okay, so these breeds we talked about last time, simply that word, the breed means a group of animals with similar characteristics. So when we say gods, the meaning, they all have similar features. So to look at uh, breeds of gods, it's very important. Yes, majorly uh, there are two main breeds of gods. These are the local breeds and the exotic breeds. Okay, remember, uh, local breeds, okay, local breeds, and local breeds, yes, yeah, these are majorly go local breeds of gods. These are gods, uh, let's say, uh, which can uh, which originate from our places. Okay, they are native breeds. Yes, we talked of local breeds. So local breeds can be indigenous, can be native breeds. Okay, yes. So uh, as we move on, we can say they are native gods of Rwanda. Okay, yes. Uh, especially in it, because we are in Rwanda, majorly for us, for this case, but uh, of any, even any country, East African gods, they are there. So, yes, but for this case, we can say they are native gods, okay? Uh, they are kept mainly for meat, okay? And more, yes, mainly for meat, in the case you check. Some can keep for them for, for uh, milk, but majorly, these local breeds are kept for meat production, and they are more resistant to diseases, okay? Look at the East African small gods and, and the Nubian goat. These goats are very, are very are good for meat production. Okay? Uh, look at the example here. We can see uh, the lock goat. Okay? Lock goat breed in Rwanda. These are reared mostly. Very common okay, in other areas. And um, they're known for uh, good meat production. Yes. So having look at those those ones, then uh, this can push us to the yes the, the next part, which are the foreign breeds of goats. Foreign breeds we say last time they can also be referred to exotic breeds, okay, or imported breeds. These can be got from uh, let's say from other countries, okay. Yes. So they are they can be do purpose. Yes, they can be kept for both meat and milk production. So these ones, majorly, we will talk over the, uh, the boar goat, okay, and the gala goat. Yes, these are very good for both meat production and milk production. Uh, looking at uh, goat breeds for meat production, mainly, first we can look at the boar. Yes, this originates from South Africa, okay. They uh, majorly say uh, they are fast maturing, they grow faster. These are uh, the boar goat, okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, they also say these ones are good, okay, for crossbreeding with local breeds. What did you talk about crossbreeding? Okay, mating, okay, the local and the exotic one. You get a crossbreed or a hybrid. So you have to go for the boas. They are very good for this. Uh, look at diagram here, the picture here. This is a boa goat. You can see, yes. This is good for meat production. Uh, moving ahead, we can look at the gala goats. These ones, the galas, these are majorly uh, goats from Kenya, the northern, the northern part of Kenya. Okay? Yes. Uh, you can check and see. These are very common. Yeah, these are gala goats from Kenya. They are very good for meat production. Uh, if you move ahead, we can go to the Nubian goat. Nubian gods, they are gods from uh, Sudan, okay? Uh, you check over this. Uh, okay, yeah, in both northern and southern Sudan, they are, they are there, you find them there. Majority of these gods uh, get find most of the names 
are got because of the place they originate from. Okay? Yeah, it is, you can look at this here, you can see uh, it has got, uh, it's white in color with brown patches or vice versa, or it might, uh, it might be, you can may find that, uh, or it might be uh, having, it might be brown with white patches, like this one you can see is brown with a white patch, four patches, look at here, these are white patches, or vice versa, meaning, they can be all white around and then you see having the brown patches or they can be brown and having the white patches. These goats are also common these days in our localities. So this is a Nubian goat, okay, from Sudan. And then, those are, we've looked at uh, goats which are kept majorly for meat production. Remember, we talked of those who we have, have the boa, we have the gala, okay. Uh, we have uh, the Nubian goats. Those are very good for meat production. Okay? Yes. So we can move ahead and look at uh, goats kept purposely uh, for milk production. Those goats which are kept for milk production, or can call them uh, dairy goat breeds. Okay? You can refer them to dairy goat breeds. Examples you can look at the Togenberg, uh, Sanen goat. And the alpine goat, okay? These are good dairy breeds. Yes, so we can look at different pictures here. Uh, this is a, a Togenberg goat, okay? Togenberg goats, or a Togenberg, major again from Switzerland, okay? Yes, they produce major three to four liters of milk per day. Yeah, they are good milk, produ milk producers. Uh, moving ahead. You can go look at a Sanen goat. A Sanen goat, majorly, also, yes, they also originate from Switzerland. And then uh, they uh, we'll talk about liters of milk. When you compare to the token bag, token bags are better in milk than these ones, okay? Because for them it is uh, like say, three to four, majorly, but here is two to three, okay, liters of milk per, milk per day. You can see here is a token bag, a Sanen goat, okay? Yes. And then uh, the third one is the alpine goat. The alpine goats, these ones originate from France. Okay? Yeah, you can check the picture here, you can see. Yeah, this is also compare the size. They're also uh, bigger than the, the, the Sanen goat. So the alpine goat and the Togenberg, in terms of milk, they are in the same range. Every three to four liters of milk per day. Yes, this milk goat is very good. Uh, yes, remember, okay, uh, goats can also be kept for more hair production, okay? The Angora goat, yes, Angora goat can, pro can produce both meat and milk, okay, but majorly also come at uh, the hair production. You find also, so, uh, like, as you can talk of uh, uh, the Chinchilla rabbits, the, uh, talking about uh, the Angora rabbits. Okay, in terms of, of, of wool production, yes, also the Angora goats, they also provide, they also be, can also be kept for hair production. Uh, then this takes us to the characteristics of goats, okay, or features of goats, yes, cattle and the goats breed rare. If you want to rear a goat or you want to rear cattle, which characteristics should you base on? Yes, which feature should you show? Ah, this is a good goat for meat rare that can be good for meat or for meat production. Yes, look at these features here. A good goat or good cattle for, for rearing, look at the growth rate. Okay, and this is very important. They should grow fast. In case you want to rear cattle for milk production, for meat production, check on those which can grow faster. It's very important. Okay. And then uh, the next point would be, uh, yes, resistance. Goats or cattle that are resistant to common diseases or like the tick bones, these are very good for meat production, for meat production. Yes, talk of this like anthrax, okay, foot and mouth diseases, cause they, they quickly attack goats and cows. So the, the best thing here, which is very good, check on their resistance, okay?
to diseases. Check on resistance to tick ball, check on resistance to, on, uh, to, to harsh climate. It's very important. Yes, those which can resist uh, harsh climate, like a desert or a semi-desert in, in a drought, you find it becomes very important. Okay? Yes, so uh, let us, this can push us, okay, uh, to feeding, okay? We see about, uh, uh, if you see, the way, look about the, the way they feed. They should be animals that can feed properly, okay? Yeah, if the health, then you feed them, okay? So feeding, okay, also can also be a, a factor, okay? Uh, so animals, cattle that can easily feed properly, you find that uh, also they are good for rearing. Uh, then, uh, yes, the next point also talk about health, healthy. So health of, the, of cattle or goats is very important. Goats that are healthy, they can be is actually good for raising, for rearing. So in terms of feeding, check on healthy. So meaning when you feed your goats or your cattle properly, they will be healthy. And this will also be a good factor for you to check on animals like goats or cattle. Yes, uh, for rearing. Yes, they should produce, let's say they should produce more milk and meat. Or one can say they should be good producers of milk and meat. This is very important. Yes, and as earlier we say that I uh, talk about surviving in a range of climatic conditions, meaning they should withstand harsh climate. Okay? Uh, then this can push us the next part. So having looked at uh, the, the, the conditions, okay, of a good goat rear or good uh, cow rear, then this can push us to feeding cattle and goats. We need to look at uh, which are the proper feeds for cattle and goats. That's uh, when you're going to rear them, you can actually follow the proper feeding to ensure their productivity and healthy. Yes. So, uh, cattle or goat should be fed on a balanced diet. Uh, we look, we already looked at a balanced diet, and we simply said that a balanced diet can be a meal, okay, is uh, a, a meal that provides all food nutrients in the right amount, okay. Or uh, we can, one can say a balanced diet is a meal containing all food values or food nutrients in the correct amount. Yes, that can be a balanced diet. So also just like uh, feeding in human beings, we're supposed to feed on a balanced diet, having all, a meal having or containing all food nutrients, okay, in the right amount. That's a balanced diet. So we look at, look at those uh, nutrients or components of a balanced diet. We looked at, uh, uh, okay, just a, a, re, a recap here, yes, uh, we can check on our source here. Remember, when you're looking at goats, yes, and cattle, okay? Yes, remember to look at, uh, compare these things just even feeding in human beings. We talked about feeding in, uh, in, in, in human beings, like looking at a balanced diet, where you saw about the components, okay? Yes, components of a balanced diet. Yes. If we understand this, then this will take us to the balanced diet in maybe like also in animals. So uh, in, in human beings, last time we looked at uh, uh, such simple, okay, components. Talk about the, carb the, pro the carbohydrates, okay. Uh, we are going to start relate this to, to cattle and goats. We talked about the proteins, yeah, proteins. Uh, talked about the vitamins. Okay, and the minerals. Uh, yeah, then uh, talked about. Uh, 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 yes, you have. Okay, talk about fats and oils. Okay. Yeah. This is commonly in human beings on finding carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins. Minerals, fats, and oils. Yeah, these can be actually the comes of a balanced diet in human beings. So having this idea can take us to see just feeding in human beings. Also have to feed our animals. Yeah, so it has
have this example and we see how, which are the components of balanced diet of animals right from this kind of uh, uh, example. Okay? So checking here, ourselves, when you want to feed your animals, okay, with the mind of feeding human beings, you can come here. Yes, a balanced diet for animals contains the following, okay? Look at uh, carbohydrates, yes, just as we said in human beings can find. Also, in, in animals, we have feeds which also provide the carbohydrates, okay? Talk about the maize stock, the maize stocks, okay? Uh, the, the bran, okay? These are very good in providing carbohydrates. Yes, so we can ch shall look at different examples. So go ahead, we're talking about uh, proteins. Yes, animals, uh, like goats, cattle need a balanced diet containing proteins. Proteins, these are good in the bodybuilding, okay? Where the carbohydrates are good in providing energy, they're energy giving, okay? Then you come to fats and oils, also we need fats and oils, Volt. look at the minerals and the vitamins, okay? And last, roughages, okay? Okay, yeah, you should look at this one. This, uh, this can be majorly uh, fiber food, majorly the roughages and digestible foods, feeds. Yes, uh, this can push us to look at a okay? summary of this, okay? Yes, so looking at this, you can see, uh, we talked about carbohydrates, say that uh, this is on majorly, we look at the potato vines, maize grains, okay? Uh, maize bran, talk of the sorghum stalks, the cereals, okay? Then the molasses, yes, uh, these are like... Um, invertebrates uh, around within the environment. So these are good, okay, for, uh, for carbohydrates production. So if I, in animals, when you feed them on these such stuff, they'll be getting enough carbohydrates. Talk of potato, vi potato vines, okay, these are the leaves, okay. Talk of maize grains, sorghum, stalks, cereals, yes, yeah. And the cereals, cereals here, yeah, these are still like a yeah, the, the, the millet and why well, millet has talk of the maize. Yes, yeah, also we can crush this and uh, have like, like having from seals. You can get the brands from maize. This is very important. Okay. And then this can push us as we talked of these proteins. Okay, it's a comp good component here. Talk of the legumes. Okay. Uh, talk of the cereal seeds. Okay. Yeah, these ones can, uh, this can be actually the concentrates, okay? Talk about uh, seeds which can be uh, crushed, okay? And then uh, turned into feeds for animals. We can make a combination of uh, crushed seeds like uh, maize, okay? Talk of those of, uh, of cotton. Yes, when you combine all the seeds, it's very important to feed your animals. They, uh, contain, they contain more proteins. And then minerals and vitamins, okay? Talk of the salt leak, okay? Yes, it's very important given to, to, to your cattle or goats. They contain more minerals like the calcium, uh, phosphorus. Then also bone meal, this is good. These are all, this is so all important for the minerals in the animals. And uh, then this can push the fats and oils at our next component of a balanced diet in cattle or goats. Yes, these are plenty of leaves and cotton seeds also have this. It's very important. Yeah, and then they will have our part here, the roughages. I talk of the green fodder, fodder crop, okay? Yeah, fodder crop can simply mean uh, any kind of plants, okay, purposely grown, feeds plant, planted or, or grown, uh, for feeding animals, you can call them fodder, okay? Fodder can include uh, like the silage, the hay, these are all good for feeding. Remember the silage, the silage can simply mean uh, 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 green grass which can be cut and given to, to, feed, to, to feed animals, okay? Yes, then the hay, you can cut your grass and preserve it for feeding animals. They, can, they are kept dry, they, they are cut, dried and kept for a long time. That is the hay. Yes, uh, so hay and, fod, uh, hay and silage are uh, examples of fodder crop. Then, uh, our, our feeds. Let us look at uh, the green pasture. Yes, can't get pasture for animals. And then vegetables. Yes, these are good. Uh, looking at this picture here, you can see napier grass. This is an example of fodder crop. Okay, yes, you can cut this green 
and then feed your animals. When you cut them uh, and just keep ones green, this will be called silage. But when you cut, dry it, and preserve it for future time, we call them hay. That will be good also for feeding your cattle or goats. So yes, remember feeding goats, a balanced dietary for goats should include carbohydrates, proteins, minerals and vitamins, proteins and oils and roughages. Okay? Uh, yes. Check here and um, this structure the pictures here potato tubers yes these are good for carbohydrates uh, look at uh, banana drinks okay all stocks chopped in two pieces and they are fed to the cattle here you can see yes uh, these are all actually good for carbohydrates uh, then uh, this push us to actually to next part here we talk of, uh, of feeding, if we talk of uh, feeding goats and cattle, it's important to note that uh, when feeding goats on, on feeds on the given staffs, okay? Yes, we should also think of providing plenty of water, drinking water to animals to accomplish their diet. This is very important. Yes. Uh, and then as we move to the next part, yes, feeding the calves, okay? So feeding calves is very important. Yes, when you're feeding calves, we can say it's very important. Calves should be fed, okay, immediately on colostrum. Yes, uh, we yes we can't get this side. Don't mind. We can clean this or, or, or a young cat, a young cattle, okay, or kids. So feeding goats, feeding kids and calves, we should immediately use uh, colostrum. Colostrum simply, okay, this is the first milk obtained from, from, an, from the animal, majorly from two, three days, okay? Yes. So, uh, colostrum. Colostrum simply, uh, can say, is the first milk, okay? Or is the milk obtained from the cow, okay? Is the milk obtained from cows or we can say from animals obtained obtained from animals okay let's say in the first three to four days uh, in the first three to four days yeah so this milk is very important for feeding kids, uh, feeding kids and calves. Okay, majorly they can ask us the importance of colostrum. Yes, importance of colostrum. Okay. Yes. Uh, we can actually have majorly two uh, best uh, importance, okay, of a colostrum. Remember, we said the colostrum is the first milk, okay, obtained from animals in two, okay, to three days. Okay, from three, to, okay, let's say all from, I can say from one to four days, okay? We can simply turn this into, uh, from the first day to the fourth day. Around that, the day is earlier, okay? Yeah, so this milk here uh, is very important to these animals. You can say it clears. The, the, the metallic canal of, of these animals simply clears, okay, or cleans the alimentary canal. The alimentary canal. Of animals, okay. Yeah, if it's a calf or a kid, it's better that we feed Uh, ah, oh yeah, it's better that we feed them, 
on colostrum to clear their to clear their alimentary canals whereby you find that during bath time you find that uh, they have got mucus in the nose in the mouth which can easily block the metallic canal so this good it clears the metallic canal removing the mucus then the next point here the importance of colostrum here we can also say uh, it improves yes on the immunity or gives immunity to the cows okay yes uh, gives immunity gives immunity okay gives immunity yes yes to the animals yeah remember immunity is the ability to fight against disease germs okay so given that a calf okay or a kid its immunity is still low so when given colostrum it raises its ability to fight against diseases so this is very important yes so uh we can move on okay yes so uh looking at cattle yes or oh, gut health is very important yes want to see uh, how can we keep the, the health of goals okay yes so goat cattle or goat health sanitation conditions meaning if you want to see that uh, your goats are healthy so what are the sanitation conditions you should put in place so for this case it has to go through the conditions okay for sanitation on your farm may let's say on you say in a goat shelter or in a cow shed yes keep animal houses clean it's very important this kind of or, or cleanliness will help you to avoid or to control diseases in the animals then uh, keeping feeding and drinking troughs clean is very important to avoid disease okay then cleaning the bushes around the animals sheds yeah this is very important in terms of uh, sanitation and then uh, keeping water sources clean if the animals let's say the, the way they get water from it's just you have to keep them clean that are uh, not dirty then uh, cutting yes otherwise from the feet from the feet of animals such as the gods so it is my look at look at the hopes and what you have to cut them off okay you, to trim them in case they are overgrowth okay it's very important then uh, uh disposing of dead animals by burying them from deep into what in the soil for example animals let's say uh uh they are they are they are there they are they have they have been suffering from uh let's say from uh, anthrax okay if they die of anthrax yes these animals should be buried should be burnt or buried to avoid what of a spread of uh anthrax on your on your farm yes yeah so you are having looked at the conditions okay or, or your conditions of keeping hygiene on 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 uh our farms let's say if they are in a goat shelter cow shelter yes this brings us to the end of our the end of our lesson and uh yes you all have to do uh yes you will be having questions or if you can help you to go through if you will get them immediately uh check on our website okay check on uh okay our uh, youtube channels will be getting them uh whatsapp groups will be getting this this is very important have your time go through those questions yes i wish you the best